Do you feel strange here on Earth? Do you feel like an outsider in this world? Do you feel like you don't belong? Do you like looking up at the stars and feeling that inner longing? Do you long for your true home, your home planet? Do you long for 5D? Do you love science fiction and Star Trek? Then maybe you are a star seed, and star seeds in the rabbit are completely different than the souls from the astral plane. Hello and welcome. After a long while, finally a video of us, the Matrixes, Jonathan and Shiva. Our topic today is cryocapsules. And what is that anyway? What is that? So some of you may know the possibility of billionaires that if they are diagnosed with a terminal illness, then they can book the cryo program. This means they can be frozen in a capsule and stay there for decades. With the aim that science will at some point be so advanced that it will be able to cure people with incurable diseases. Then the billionaires are thawed and revived and then healed. That's the plan with cryocapsules. These are real capsules. They go in there and are filled with nitrogen. Yes. Frozen. Frozen, right? <laughs> yes, that is the cryogenic process, at least here on Earth. Yes, but it doesn't just exist on Earth. Correct. Now imagine this technology 10,000 years ahead. Or more. And what is possible and already exists, because from a technological point of view, aliens are much, much further ahead than we are here on Earth. And that's where we come to the topic of cryocapsules. And in this case, we also speak from experience, we'll tell you that. We will, of course, give you some examples later. But speaking from experience related to, we are in cryocapsules, both of us, side by side. But more on that later. Now let's start with a little overview, I would say. What are cryocapsules and how are they structured? What possible uses are there? Who uses these cryocapsules? For what purpose? Good intentions, bad intentions? And how long can you actually stay in such a cryocapsule? Yes, you know, you can incarnate from the astral plane. Most people do that too. So when they die, they go into the light, go to the middle astral plane, and that's where the next life is planned. This is actually commonly known as reincarnation. But extraterrestrials, who are technologically much more advanced and also have the Earth in their focus, have decided to support the Earth in its development and progress. And that's why the star seeds, the star seeds, actually the extraterrestrials, who have already developed further in terms of consciousness, come to Earth and incarnate on Earth in order to positively influence the collective human consciousness. So if you are an extraterrestrial, an alien, a race from another planet, be it Arcturus, Sirius, the Impleiades, and whatever they are called, then you have the opportunity to decide at some point to go on a mission, yours, Earth mission, so to speak, there are various programs, alien programs, that have just decided, okay, we're going to help the Earth and humanity develop their consciousness, as you said. And then they have the opportunity to, usually there are large rooms with a lot of cryocapsules in them, so you can choose one or in most cases, even assign one. You have your own special cryocapsule and program one or more lives there, maybe many, many more, 
We'll get to that later. You put yourself in these cryocapsules, but you are not frozen. That is just human technology, and your consciousness is then projected onto Earth, transferred. Yes, how are these cryocapsules constructed? Yes, I sometimes like to jokingly call it the iPod 5000 or something like that. Exactly, because you may be familiar with these VR glasses that are already available on Earth. You have glasses, you put them on, and you're suddenly in a different world. You can turn left, turn right, look up, down, back. Seamless reality in which you can move. The difference, of course, is that you know that you have these VR glasses on and that you are actually in your living room. Now imagine this technology 10,000 years in the future. What does this look like? And then you slowly understand what these cryocapsules actually are, this iPod 5000. Yes, the cryocapsules are basically structured like this. They are usually relatively white, usually have a glass lid like this, and have different arrangements depending on the possible use. We'll get to that later. These cryocapsules are filled with a liquid. We don't know exactly what's in there, but it's certainly something that keeps the body young and fresh, keeps it healthy, supplies it with nutrients, and ensures that you don't age either. After all, you're not just on Earth for a year, you're sometimes on Earth for thousands of years. That's why this liquid has to be highly developed to ensure that you don't come back as an alien old man. For example, we know that we have been here for a long time and that we are not old aliens in our cryopods. We cannot say exactly how technically specific the consciousness projection works, but we know that we are in there and have programmed our realities. We also don't yet know whether we have now programmed a life and come back after each life and then program the next one, or whether we have programmed all the lives in advance and are now simply playing through them. We rather suspect that every now and then we wake up over there and reprogram. More on that later in terms of a near-death experience. But yes, as soon as you lie in there, you sort of fall asleep. And the moment you fall asleep, you forget that you are a Pleiada, a Syriana, or whatever. And then wakes up here, so to speak, either as a baby or as an adult. There are different options there too. Yes, you can program these cryo capsules as you wish. Exactly. So you can join at the age of 25 on Earth and your entire school years, your childhood, your parents can all be programmed as a memory. You can't even tell the difference. You then think that you were born normally on Earth and have such and such parents. You went to kindergarten there, you went to primary school there, and so on. It's all just memories, nothing really happened. You just think it happened because you can't distinguish these fake memories from real memories that you actually experienced. They are identical in their signature. And these cryocapsules also make that possible. But you shouldn't think just because the memories are fake that they aren't real, no matter whether they are fake or real. You have them in your memory, in your signature, and you have to live with them. For example, if you had fake traumatic memories as a child and now want to resolve them, you will also have to resolve them. because they are stored in your mental signature, in your soul's wealth of experience. But there is also the possibility that your body was previously inhabited by a soul, and then you agreed that after 10 or 15 years, this soul leaves and you enter the body. That is, you have a memory that was actually made by another soul, but it is still your own. It 
it is indistinguishable. That's why a lot of people may have said, for example, that I was incarnated as Napoleon. Yes, then perhaps he programmed his cryocapsule accordingly, namely to live as Napoleon for once, even if it's just for a year. And since everything is happening at the same time, not only one person can have decided that I will incarnate as Napoleon. Well, what kind of cryocapsules are there? There are different possible uses, and because we have seen and experienced it, we differentiate between short-term cryocapsules, long-term cryocapsules, and medical cryocapsules. Yes, short-term cryocapsules. Yes, they are intended more for entertainment for the star seeds. They then take a cryocapsule and say to themselves, yes, I would like to have a weekend in Mallorca and have a real party. Exactly, that's what they sound like. Or maybe to be involved in a war between the bands for a weekend, where there's real shooting and something really going on. As I said, remember, the VR glasses also offer such entertainment. Then, I don't know, you can go into zombie land for an hour and fight around with zombies. Or you would like to do something else? Maybe be a pilot and then fly in this airplane simulator over the plains of the world, through the countries, over the seas. Over the forests. And that is also possible with these cryocapsules. You put yourself in there, program for a weekend or maybe a week and then it's off. Then you have fun and an adventure. Yes, what we hadn't really thought of yet is that you can perhaps use these short-term programs or short-term cryocapsules to carry out an emergency mission, for example. Maybe there's something really dramatic and political going on on Earth right now, or it doesn't just apply to Earth, it applies to all planets. Maybe something really dramatic is going on and you have to intervene briefly, which is so far away that you can't just jump over there and then you lie down there in a cryocapsule. You also have to consider that the avatars if they die there and you are in the cryocapsule, you would of course come home healthy if you were to fly there alive to somehow take part in a dangerous mission. Then of course your avatar that you like dies. So you put yourself in a cryo, take an avatar there and do your mission. Of course, this can also be a short-term mission. That's what I'm spontaneously thinking about now. Yes, then of course there are the long-term cryocapsules where you can really program for years you can then get involved and your program will run, for example, for an entire incarnation. That means you start maybe at the age of 10 or 20, yes, and then you stay in this life for 50, 60, 70 years at a time. And some even program beyond that. This means that they can even program their death, what they will experience after death, and then be reborn again in an incarnation. Some may have three incarnations. The cryocapsule programs some for five, some for eight or ten or more. And that is a very individual decision that takes place. Then there are the medical cryocapsules. These are actually the same cryocapsules, look the same, but are used for medical purposes. For example, if you had a serious accident and lost an arm or severe internal injuries, then you put yourself in these medical cryo capsules and you will be completely healed. But what we've also seen, for example, some breeds also make you experience your birth in this cryo capsule. More on that later, because I experienced such a special birth in my 5D avatar. Yes, a very exciting experience that Shiva has already told me. And of course, there are also those who use the cryo capsule to have a negative influence on the world. That means they tune themselves into the matrix, similar to the matrix in the film, tune themselves into, for example, some high-ranking politician and use that. 
and can then sign certain contracts or make certain regulations or change laws or intervene in some other way to influence world events in the direction that represents the agenda of the alien race, which may not be as constructive. As the starseeds, for example, you always have stories about how Clinton is a reptilian. There are pictures where Clinton pulls down her mask and underneath you can see a reptilian face. How symbolic when you think about it, because one could certainly assume that a reptiloid race, which has its own agenda in influencing the human population, gets involved here, takes over Hillary and then acts accordingly in order to achieve. the goals that they have. Now we have given you an overview of cryocapsules and now we come to our incredibly exciting experiences with our cryocapsules. Jonathan, yes, what experiences have you had with cryocapsules? You've already told me a lot of things you've seen and experienced. Yes, I actually first noticed the topic of cryocapsules through a friend. She studied and wrote a paper for her studies on cryocapsules. And she was completely fascinated by the subject, what the cryocups can do and how millionaires book these programs. Some freeze their entire body, some just their head. They just hope it's a little cheaper, just the head, but they just hope that at some point they will be able to transplant heads. That means that in 100 or 200 years they might have the body left for this billionaire. The head is then placed on it, and then he is resuscitated and cured of his illness. Like Futurama, actually. Yes, she found the topic so exciting, and it always appealed to me somehow, because I always thought so. Somehow. It's interesting, all this technology. And if you imagine, far in the future, who knows how mature this program or this possibility will be. And I kept getting little signs like that. For example, an acquaintance of mine from England, Rees, once had an out-of-body experience. We've often talked about astral travel, and he described an experience to me that gave me goosebumps all over my body. Which, yes, he said that he was on an astral journey and his spirit helper had just arrived. And the spirit helper said, Come, Ruiz, come with me. I have to show you something. But only if you really want to. And of course he was curious and said, yes, I would like to come. And then the two of them were thrown out from the earth through space and then ultimately arrived on another planet. There was a spacecraft in orbit near this planet where they arrived, a huge thing. And when he entered the spaceship with his spirit helper, he saw that thousands of these cryocorps were being created. Thousands, all in a row, or there were different rooms in which there were 8, 10, 12, 15, depending. A bit like a hotel or a hostel, perhaps. Like the Japanese capsule hotels. Yes, something like that. And then they led him to a very specific cryogenic capsule and said to him, look here, the spirit guide said to him. And he looked into the cryogenic capsule and there was an alien just lying there in the capsule and seemed to be sleeping. And then he said, why are you showing me this? And the spiritual helper says to him, that is you. And that gave me huge goosebumps. And that was also the time when I was really more interested in the topic. And I somehow had the feeling that there must be a link between me and the topic of cryocapsules. 
But that was always fascinating. I still remember when I was watching Star Trek or something, and then it was about cryocapsules, or they found people in cryos. Then I thought, wow, that's so exciting. I always found that extremely fascinating. Yes, yes, of course. And years later, a few years ago, we started to remember individual scenes. What did you suddenly remember? Well, I think we had just met relatively recently. Yes, I was a hypnagogist. And suddenly I saw our alien race. I was just there and he showed me. It was such a long lollipop. Grandmas are all bigger. What does long lulach mean? It's really hard for me to estimate, but he was certainly 250 to 3 meters. 270. Anyway, here we are. We stood in a room that had a lot of cryos in it. I can't estimate it. It could have been 50, 100 or 200. I have no idea. In any case, there were lots and lots of cryos there. He then led me to this capsule, or we were already standing relatively in front of it, and there we were. Yes, we were both in there. Exactly, that was my first memory, hypnagogic experience with cryocapsules, where he showed me that we were lying in there. Well, I also remember that we somehow found each other in other bodies, so quite large alien bodies, and that we had just discussed with each other whether we should use this program at all. I still remember that. And I also know that you are in the cryo capsule to my left. Exactly. So that's mine, and you saw it that way too, and that we then entered it. Funnily enough, I seem to remember that this capsule was also closed. That means there really was a lid on it. This is usually an indication that it is a long-term cryogenic capsule. Because the short-term cryo capsules are open, you can also put it in there, for example. You can stand there for an hour or two and experience something. A few days on Earth in comparison. So time passes a little differently on Earth than in such a cryo capsule. Oh yeah, at least one in five or so. From a feeling or from, no, there was a memory, but I can't remember the memory. But it was at least one in five. Yes, you don't know what progress these cryo capsules have made. I can certainly imagine that, as with smartphones, there are very inexpensive smartphones that can't do that much. And then there are the expensive smartphones that can do more. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are also cryo capsules where it's maybe 1.10 or 120. More time saving. You can become like that too, already on the respective planet. Now the new iPod 6000 with which you can incarnate 1 in 20 on the 3D matrix and have fun. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yes, I also remember that in Cuenavaga in Mexico, we sat on the balcony and had a very exciting conversation about cryocapsules and all sorts of things. And suddenly a picture came that we were in cryos again, but on a spaceship near Jupiter. I don't know if it's true now. Sure, we asked about it too. It may be true, but for me it was more of an indication than proof. Yes, and some of you who read my blog probably also know that I once wrote about an experience that I had that really impressed me at the time. And in this experience, I was also in an out-of-body state. And the experience started with me just lying down in bed and concentrating on detaching myself from my body. Suddenly, five creatures came into the bedroom. A very large creature, I don't know, probably two meters or larger, and four small ones that were maybe a meter tall. 
and they arrived and they all talked to each other. A bit like in Star Wars, these traders, the ones with these brown robes, who are always trying to trade somehow or something. And at that moment, it actually seemed to me as if this big alien had hired these four for something. And then he came to my bedroom with them. And then they immediately started massaging my feet, massaging my arms and stuff like that. And at some point, bang, I walked out of my body on my own, but I couldn't move. They must have somehow managed to paralyze me. And then they grabbed my body and just took it with them. And they somehow made sure that I couldn't see anything. It was all black. I kept trying to see something. I wanted to take a look at them too. So in this experience, I could only rely on what I felt, what I perceived so empathetically, or try to scan them on an emotional level, what they look like, whether they are male or female, and so on and so on, and in what environment I am. Well, anyway, they kidnapped me. Literally kidnapped. And they took me there, and suddenly I felt an incredibly large space. At first I thought it was a bit like an airport. And then I actually realized that it wasn't just an airport, it was a huge spaceport. That means you could probably go there, just like we can go here at the airport. If you want to go from Germany to Mexico or something like that, you can book a trip from Sirius to Vega or something like that at a space airport. <laughs> and that's where they took me. And I kept thinking, that doesn't exist. What do they want with me at a spaceport? And somehow in this spaceport, there were also cryocapsules like that. Those were kind of chambers. It reminds me a bit of those old photo booths where you could go in and have your photo taken with your partner, for example, or which you used to use in the old days. When there was no digital technology to create a passport photo for his application or something like that. And then they dragged me into a room like this and sat me down on a chair. And then I sat there in the chair still couldn't move, and then one of these little dwarves said to me, yes, now you can look, now you can look, now you can look. <laughs> Is that cute? And at that moment, a, I don't know, HD 4K multi-quality display really opened up. You could almost say, in any case, the perception was razor sharp. And then I suddenly somehow saw that I was in space and I flew into space towards a planet, a big planet. Well, it seemed to me to be bigger than the Earth. And the closer I got, the more details I could see. For example, that several very elongated spaceships were in orbit. And I suspect nowadays, well, I wasn't aware of it back then, but nowadays I suspect that these spaceships are also these cryo-hotels among themselves. That's pretty funny. And I thought to myself, as I saw the planet and flew closer and closer, I thought to myself, somehow this whole picture here seems so familiar. These spaceships in orbit and this planet, the way it looks. And then I looked at it and then suddenly it hit me. I got goosebumps all over my body and I remembered at that moment, this is my home planet. And somehow you feel an unlikely longing to roll back there, roll back to this home planet. And then suddenly the simulation ended and I woke up in my bed. And of course I knew, oh look, so there's a connection that I'm apparently one of these star seeds, who as a result is most likely taking part in this cryo program.
Yes, then I have a few more experiences that I would, of course, also like to share with you. Once I had a dream. It was relatively lucid. I was pretty conscious about it. It was about a short-term cryo program. These are inhabitants of a planet far, far away. They have short-term cryo chambers or capsules, so you can put yourself in there for a weekend and then incarnate on Earth. That means they lie down in their cryogenic capsule on Friday evening or Saturday morning, program an incarnation for Earth, and wake up again on Sunday evening to go back to work. For them, two days pass, but on Earth, one incarnation passes for them. And from what I noticed, they weren't particularly spiritually highly developed beings. They used their short-term cryo capsule to let off steam a bit. And usually not even in a nice way, a lot of debauchery. Well, you would call them evil things. Well, they're nice on their planet, but they use the earth to really let loose. To party an incarnation because they don't care. When they wake up again on Sunday evening, the incarnation is over and they continue living their lives on their planet. Yes, that was my experience with short-term programs, a weekend for an incarnation. Yes, that must have been the iPod 8000, right? Yes, I don't know. In any case, I was surprised too, but I knew at that moment that it was just a weekend because we're not talking about one to five. No, just that surprised me too. But these long-term cryo capsules are designed to ensure that you stay in there longer Yes, exactly. So it could well be that you end up swimming around in there for 10 years. Exactly, at least like that. And since all aliens outside the 3D matrix are actually 10 times older than us here anyway. Yes. You can already find that in the Bible, how old they got, 900, 1000 years old or something. And in this context, you can do a long-term program in the cryo capsule for 10 years or 20 years. Yes, you have 20 years left. Yes, then I had another experience with both of us. We had, these were other cryo capsules. The cryo capsules were arranged in a circle. Maybe you know this from the fair, from the fair. You have a kind of plug in the middle and these seats or capsules are arranged around the outside. That's how it was. I had no idea. I think I even counted it, or at least I recorded it, about nine capsules. They were arranged in a circle and they were put in there for short-term missions. So we both went on a short-term mission and put ourselves in a cryogenic capsule. I mean, I would have been there too. So you were traveling on two levels, astral and really, but I can also confuse that because I was pretty lucid at that moment, or hypnagogic. Anyway, we put ourselves in there, in this cryogenic capsule, woke up somewhere completely different, and there were weapons there too. And in any case, that was a mission, a kind of, what do you call it? I don't know it. In any case, we shot at other people. We should free someone. The mission really only lasted a day or two at most. And yes, that was a short-term program. Yes, I can imagine it very well, correct. Yes, and then I had another experience with the medical cryocapsules. And that was a very exciting experience. We just took our obligatory nap again, meditation nap. And I was, yes, it was actually relative to the end. I woke up, looked around the room, and suddenly I was in both places. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps again, in both places at the same time. Once in this medical cryo capsule and in the bed in the bedroom. And I experienced the birth of our son there, so to speak, live. I felt how one feels on this 5D level. It was incredible to get there. In any case, I noticed both at the same time. 
I was lying in this medical cryo capsule. It was open and had a glass thing, but this time the glass was meant to be pushed and not opened upwards. You stood at the foot of the cryo capsule. It's not like a normal birth, but the baby is teleported out. something along those lines. In any case, it was very strange to experience it all live, all the emotions, the whole feeling, this atmosphere. They just teleported the baby out and placed it in your arms. Yes, that was the experience. It was very exciting. Yes, it was a son. The son has grown up and now has his own spaceship. We already know that much. But other than that, we have no further contact. So when we get home, we don't have to pull the tinter first. Yes, it takes a load off my heart that he is already an adult. Yes, so these are a few of the experiences we have had. Yes, do you remember here when we were in Paris at Madame Tussauds? Oh, yes. Both of us at the same time. Wow, we have to go in there. Yes, yes, Madame Tussauds actually had a few things like that recreated from the film Alien, as you all know. With Ripley and that weird alien monster and stuff. That was somehow the rage among science fiction back then, I think in the 90s or 80s. And there were also cryocapsules in there. And at Madame Tussauds, they recreated a scene like that. The android that was part of the film was standing in front. There were two cryo capsules in the picture and behind it, and then you could go around back there and adjust yourself there. No, there was just a cryo capsule there. We each took photos of each other and then patched them together. Right, you're right. You see, you already have it in your head. But it's funny because we're lying next to each other in the cryo capsule anyway, and so you've already forgotten about it. We automatically somehow both took it next to each other in the photo. Sometimes, right? Yes, sometimes, right? So it's funny, yes. The coincidences that happen, the clues that you get in everyday life. Yes, now we're actually getting to some very exciting, I'll call them insights into the cruise. I will now briefly tell you about my near-death experience again before we get to general topics. I once had a near-death experience, and then I was up there, five, six, I don't know. Anyway, then a voice came. She was next to me, left. I was in the vast universe, everything around me was black. And then in the distance, I just saw a crazy rope field planet. And the voice asked me, can you stay here now? And then they hardly came to Oda anymore. Then he showed up, and then the decision was already clear then I was here again. But what I want to say is that with the cryo capsules, you have another exit point from the matrix. We puzzled over why me for so long. And I also knew at that moment that I had left the matrix. That I could have left. So for me, the topic would have been over here, earth matrix. And we puzzled, how is that possible? And it wasn't that long ago that we came up with the idea that it must have something to do with the cryo capsules, of course. There are exit points that you can program if, let's say, you're no longer interested in the matrix. Most of the time you decide to go back to the matrix anyway because you know that you have a mission that... You have put yourself in cryo to complete or complete a mission. You came down here with a purpose to help in some way or to gain experience, whatever. Anyway, this is another exit opportunity for starseeds. They programmed them into themselves. After much thought, we came up with the idea. I could have left the matrix because I had just programmed that into my creopod. Yes, and that also clarifies the question that we are asked again and again. If you are so familiar with out-of-body experiences and spiritual dissociations, why haven't you left the matrix yet?
Why haven't you left before? Diva could have walked away if she wanted to. And we also found out that our programming of the cryocapsule will probably expire in 2038. That's why we know our program only lasts until 2038 and then the thing will switch off anyway. So we're still enjoying the last few years here on Earth and telling you. about everything that's possible, how to achieve such states, how to get such memories, how to use spiritual dissociation, and so on and so forth, just for our sake, to leave a contribution to all the information that is withheld. From you out there, that no one tells you or that you can hardly find anywhere. And before we say goodbye, in the year 2038, when our program ends, we will leave you with the information that we have given. you and will continue to give you. Yes, and how do we get to 2038? This could be far-fetched now. No, it's not like that. I was lying in bed one night. I had my eyes open again, so I saw it live. That's where my shining future self comes from, so to speak. I'll just call it that. He was standing at the end of the bed. I just saw it. And he said to me, in 20 years, I'm like, what will happen in 20 years? At that moment, it is immediately clear to you what is meant. I just knew, but of course I asked anyway. And then that just meant, well, it wasn't spoken verbally, but telepathically. But then I said, well, leave the matrix. Yes, exactly. That's why we extrapolated, of course. When are the 20 years up? And that's why we get to around October 2038. Yes, approximately. Could be plus or minus a year. We do not know yet. That explains why, as mentioned at the beginning, we don't have to incarnate as babies, because when we lie in this cryocapsule, we can of course program when we want to enter at any time. I think you already explained everything in detail at the beginning, yes. Yes, how is this all connected? There are souls that reincarnate from the astral plane, then the star seeds come and latch onto them. The reptilians have also stolen this technology at some point, or I don't know how. They use that too, and what connections are there with the ways out of the matrix? The black portals, how is it all connected? The extras and what's going on in the world right now, and what's happening here in the world, and how it all comes together to create a big picture, is what we want to tell you in this six-round video series and this is the first video and that's why we chose this first video about the cryocapsules because that's a certain basic knowledge that you need to have in order to be able to understand the next videos we were asked to make a video about the extras for example but we can't do that yet because it's all connected to the cryocapsule and so on that there are cross connections to the matrix ai that creates the extras and, 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 and we'll get to that in the next videos, talk about it in much more detail and then these six videos create a clear picture where you can then understand everything. What we talk about because we keep getting messages that say I'm not really getting it right or what are the connections and a lot of questions that people have. And we decided to clarify all these questions in the next videos. Yes, an exciting topic. I know we've spent the last two years on a certain topic, smurfing. And yes, of course, the point is not only to reduce the population, but also to throw out the star seeds so that they... ...cannot fulfill their mission. Because the cryocapsules, in order to tune into the matrix, have a very specific frequency. And this frequency can be disrupted at the DNA level. 
And some of you are probably thinking, oh, look, look. Yes, we have missions here, making holes in the matrix, waking up sleeping sheep, all sorts of things, increasing the consciousness of the earth. And of course, there is technology, little bots that make them into the Smurfs. And these bots disrupt the frequency. And if the frequency is disturbed, the starseed is thrown out. Of course, the starseed can be happy about being back on the home planet, but he is here with a mission. He doesn't actually want to go back, but he gets kicked out. We didn't necessarily experience this live, but we heard it from a really trustworthy friend. That's what happened there with the husband. Unfortunately, he was just an extra. Exactly right. So you can also make a star seed an extra on Earth, right? Yes, unfortunately. Yes, but of course we'll talk about that in our next videos or in our Zoom live events, which we have every two months. Of course, something like that is probably also an issue. There will definitely be a lot of talk about it next time about what we have proclaimed and revealed today. And it's an exciting topic and we have a lot more to say about it. And of course we can always discuss things like this at the Zoom live events. The next one I think is three. September or so, 7 p.m. You can register for Brain Kick if you want to take part. I think the next Zoom live event could be very exciting because of this video. Yes, if you watch the video and got one goosebump after another, then maybe you are a star seed. Oh yes, if you're into science fiction Star Trek, you somehow feel like you really want to go home. Although, of course, that could also have something to do with the astral plane or your home planet. You just have to listen to yourself, what your interests are and what you feel and yes what concerns you and what you have a soft spot for or something like that. None of this happens by chance. This is all connected. Or when you look up at the stars and feel a longing to somehow get back to the stars or something, are these all signs that you are such a... Starseed? Exactly. If you obviously think this video is nonsense or feel nothing at all about it, then you are probably not a starseed from the cryocapsule program, but simply incarnated directly from the astral plane. Yes, actually most people do that, so the starseeds are, how should I put it, a pretty small percentage that incarnate here on Earth, but we're all getting there. If you're interested in all of this, are you lying in a cryocapsule or are you incarnated via the astral plane? mental plane, then you can accomplish all of this with hypnagogic states, astral travel, via dissociation, the same skills that we actually used to do all of this, find out, and yes, we can of course recommend our course out of the matrix. And in order to learn all of this, astral travel and dissociation, we can of course also recommend our online courses on astral travel and dissociation. Because these are exactly the techniques we found out about all this. Those are just our options. We trained for a long, long time and practiced a lot. In order to perfect astral travel or dissociations, to perfect hypnagogic states, to get pineal flashes by cleaning and decalcifying our pineal gland so that the information can come in and you can do that too. Oh yeah, so it's not a question of talent or how great you are or anything like that, it's just a matter of practice. And those who train this also come into these expansion states and then you can look behind the scenes of the matrix and then receive memories or messages or all sorts of things can then be given to you. Yes, and finally visit us at www.matrixa.com. Give us a like, subscribe to us. We would of course be very happy to receive your comments on the video.
What have you experienced? Are you in a cryo capsule? Maybe you already know that? Exactly. We will actually be very interested in that. All the best to you. All the best. See you in the next video. Yeah, do you really think we should really do this cryo program, this Earth Matrix program? I'm really unsure. It has so many dangers. The Andromedians also swear by this program and they are already very spiritually developed. Okay, you're right. So we have a mission, we have a goal, we have to go to Earth, we have to help the people there. Okay, you're right, we make it, so off to Krios. Okay, great, then I would say, let's give Bridge clear the cryos, 